My Ender 5 build continues. This time it gets a lid as well as a G-code powered chamber heater. I've got a few 3D printers and that gives me the opportunity to modify them for specific purposes. This Ender 5 is most of the way through becoming a sealed heated build chamber printer for those high temperature filaments that like to warp. In part one, I installed an all metal hot end, high temperature removable magnetic wham bam bed, some other bits and pieces, but most importantly, acrylic panels. I then made a video on how I added a custom electronics enclosure to mount an SKR version 1.3 and this setup drew and expelled air from outside of the chamber to keep the electronics cool. Today I present to you the next part where we add a lid as well as a heater for the chamber controlled by Marlin. We're going to start with the lid as well as the front door handle. Previously the door was sitting in place and you could just pop it out with your finger to open it. With the top about to be sealed however I needed another solution and this is what I came up with. One of my favourite things I've ever designed was also one of the simplest with this Solid Doodle 2 door handle. This is a very similar design, swivelling from a hole drilled through the acrylic and I haven't modelled it here but you can see that the part extends through and catches inside the V-slot. There's then a simple knob on the outside of the enclosure secured from the rear with a bolt. The gap as I've designed it is 3mm to suit my acrylic between the front and the rear piece. We need to mark out the centre point before we drill and we start by marking the vertical height. My door is 400 high, therefore I mark a line at 200mm. Next we need to get the horizontal spacing and it should be approximately 30mm out from the edge of the acrylic. You can verify this by placing the rear piece inside the V-slot and seeing if the centre point aligns with where you've marked. You'll need an 8mm hole to suit my design and try not to rush like me otherwise it will flex and you'll put a big crack in your door. I guess I'm going to have to make this one again. You can now screw the front knob onto the rear piece using an M3 bolt and should have a fully working door. Now we can turn our attention to the lid and although there's moving parts on top of the frame of the machine, nothing ever comes the whole way to the front of the frame and nothing ever comes the whole way to the back. As the print head moves from side to side, the situation doesn't change at all. Therefore we can have something solid at the front and rear of the machine but we need to have something flexible on the sides to allow the parts to still move. In a previous video I gave a preview of my plans and that was to extend the enclosure out and over the top of the whole gantry. This is not ideal because it adds bulk and encloses some of the stepper motors making them get much hotter. However it does a good job of sealing the moving gantry. I then remembered this part that I designed for my CNC years ago to collect dust with a vacuum attached and it had bristles on the bottom that could move over the object being machined but still get a reasonable seal. This idea was confirmed when a gentleman named Matt emailed me this pictures of his enclosure after seeing my first video. You can see he's using a similar type of system to seal inside the stepper motors but still allow movement and this solution confirmed the direction I was going to head. Furthermore, Matt said that he'd tested for several hundred hours with chamber temperatures up to 95 degrees and the nylon bristles had held up perfectly. I found a local supplier on eBay that let me choose the length as well as an aluminium extrusion profile to hold the brush in place. I chose a 100mm length version and when it arrived I was pleased to see it was really supple which should allow good movement underneath by the gantry. I decided to mirror the factory look and use 20mm black v-slot extrusion to build my upper lid. In CAD I mocked up this very simple design just so I could measure my lengths and I made sure I allowed 110mm clearance between the upper and lower sections and this would account for the 100mm of brush plus a little bit for the extrusion. I used a table saw to trim the 2020 extrusion to length as well as cut some acrylic panels to slot inside the V-slot trenches. A cutting list with all of the dimensions can be found linked below in my Thingiverse link. The last thing I needed to model were these very simple brackets. You need four of each in total, they all print without support and in not much time. Each one has a 5mm hole and they're intended to be used with T-nuts to go with V-slot extrusion. Putting the pieces together is pretty straightforward. You get the ends flush, put a short M5 bolt through into a T-slot nut and then tighten everything up. Once you've got three pieces together, don't forget to peel off the plastic from the 3mm acrylic and then slide it into place before putting the final piece of extrusion into place and repeating the process. It only takes around 10-15 minutes until all of the pieces are together and we have our completed frame. 
Considering this is a non-structural piece, it seems plenty rigid for the job at hand, so we can turn our attention to attaching the brush strips. I started by cutting down two extrusion pieces to fit on either side that holds the brush, and then drilling two 5mm holes per side to hold these mounting extrusions in place when the rest of the parts are prepared. I used a mini hacksaw to cut down the actual brush piece, and that leaves the end exposed and it's possible for the nylon strands to simply fall out. So to alleviate this problem long term, I put the end inside a vise and then squished it flat so they could no longer escape. Before we bolt in the mounting extrusion, we need to slide the brush into place and then we simply lower it down over the top of two T-slot nuts and then once again use some M5 bolts, this time with some washers, to lock everything into position. The bristles are very soft and it is super satisfying to do this with your finger. We're now ready to install the lid and it simply sits over the top. There's sufficient space on top for the PTFE tube and wiring to go to the hot end and when we do a movement test from front to back, we can see that the bristles deform and move around the carriage like we would expect. This won't be a perfect airtight seal, but it will definitely get the job done. I'm very happy with this lid. It's easy to just lift it off to access the top of the printer, and surprisingly, it doesn't rattle mid-print. Now, there are multiple solutions and ways you could do this, but remember, the best solution is the one that works for you, and this one definitely works for me. So now onto the heated build chamber. And this didn't go as well as the lid, but I've learned enough that I think I can refine it in future. Nevertheless, here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can set one up. I'm picking up from where I left off in my SKR version 1.3 video, but the important thing is you start with Marlin 2.0 to have support for a heated build chamber. And we're using an SKR version 1.3 because it has an extra slot for stepper motors as well as thermistors and MOSFET outputs. But really what we want to do is drive a heater as well as measure the temperature. To measure temperature, we need a thermistor, and I used a generic one that comes with cheap hot end kits. In Marlin 2.0, there's a line for temp sensor chamber. We need to change that from zero to match your thermistor, which in my case is a number one. We then need to come to your pins file, comment out the line for the second hot end. For me, that's temp one pin, and add a new line that says define temp chamber pin and set it to the same value, which for me is two. On the SKR version 1.3, it means we can plug in our thermistor on the plug labeled TH1. I used a cable tie to secure mine up high, more or less in line with the nozzle and not too close to the heated bed. If I have the heater down the bottom, hot air will rise and the whole chamber should be this temperature. We now need to configure our output pin for our chamber heater that would normally be used for a second hot end. Here it's labeled HE1 and it's pin 2.4. In configuration underscore advanced, there's a line that says heater chamber pin, and we need to add in that pin number on SKR version 1.3, that's P2 underscore 04. I was previously using this MOSFET to turn on and off the hot end fans, so I need to revert that back to minus one. That's enough to get it compiled, but you can see on the LCD display, the readings for the bed and the chamber overlap and are hard to read. This is an easy fix in Marlin. We come to our status screen file, and for the first instance of status bed X, we set it to 60, which will fix the spacing and make everything legible. So what will we plug into our MOSFET to raise the temperature inside the chamber? One option is to buy something off the shelf, in this instance from Piopoli, a chamber heater designed for resin printers. It's got a pretty typical setup with a fan on the back, a heating element in the middle, and then heat sinks to take that heat before the fan blows it through the chamber. This one even has the bonus of running off 24 volts, but unfortunately it's just not powerful enough. I tried to make my own chamber heater following the same principles but using cheap parts I had lying around. In the middle I have a hot end heater block with a heater cartridge inside that. Either side I have strapped two heat sinks that normally go on stepper motors, and the whole thing is bolted with some M3 bolts acting as a heat break to a metal frame that normally comes with cheap eBay extruders. I then have a fan either side to take the heat and blow it through the chamber. I mounted it onto the 2020 frame in the rear left corner of the printer. And you can see that even when the printer's at its lowest point, all of the wiring just clears. You can turn on your chamber heater from the LCD by going to the temperature menu and then going to enclosure. This will give a nice readout on the LCD since we made that firmware tweak. You can also use the M141 G-code command from Marlin in your start G-code to set the chamber temperature at the start of your print. And that's it, a series of fairly simple steps one after each other. So that's how to set it up in Marlin, but did it work? Well, not very well. The problem is the heater is just not hot enough. 
it pumps out air somewhere between 30 to 40 degrees. Ideally, the chamber temp should be just underneath the glass transition temp of the filament, which is more or less the same as you set your heated bed to. 40 degree air is never going to be able to heat the chamber up to the 100 degrees or so required for ABS. What I need is more power, but the power supply is already stretched and takes a long time to heat the bed up to 100. That's why I've ordered a mains powered silicon bed and a solid state relay to control that. I'll investigate a mains powered chamber heater too, perhaps based on a hairdryer or a heat gun. The good news is that even without the heated chamber, the lid still improved the performance. I took a hollow cube and formed it into a torture test by stretching it out to be a very long and skinny diamond. Those pointy edges are just asking to warp and peel off the bed. Even without the chamber heater, it reaches about 40 degrees inside the printer and it's about 18 ambient today. This is still not that hot and the print did fail, but with the lid in place it made it more than twice as far through the print before lifting up and delaminating. I'll run the same G-code again once I've tweaked my two heaters and see if the results improve. And if they do, I'll be ready to tackle a range of high temperature engineering plastics and you can catch that in a future installment. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please leave them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.